Welcome to Gethsemane Lutheran Church for our Sunday morning worship service. Our mission is to be engaged by God in a living faith at home, at church, and in the world. And we hope that through these services, we help you to be part of that mission. We encourage you to connect with us through our website at glconline.org and let us know how we can help you on your journey. Now, let us worship together. Welcome to Gethsemane's online worship service. We are grateful that we can worship together in this way and thankful that you have found us online. Please continue to check our website regularly and our Facebook page for updates on all of our virtual offerings. We had a wonderful introduction to our parking lot VBS this past week. There was fun music, Bible stories, and activities for participants of all ages. It is not too late to participate in VBS. For the next three weeks on Wednesday evening, you can join us at 6.30 in the South parking lot, and we would love to see you there. I have a special invitation for you this week, and I would like to encourage you to watch a movie uh, independently called Emmanuel. It's a story that, tells, that is told about the lives of the nine people that lost their lives studying scripture at their AME church in South Carolina five years ago. So if you watch the movie independently, then please join me next Thursday evening at 7 o'clock p.m. for a Zoom video discussion about the movie. The link to participate in the Zoom discussion will be made available on our website later in the week. ELCA churches around the country have been encouraged to participate in watching this movie and then having ongoing conversation as we together as a church work to denounce white supremacy. We are grateful for your continuance of sharing your signs of grace with us. You can continue to send them into our website or post them on your social media platforms. We are keeping them as part of our worship services because they remind us that God's grace surrounds us and grounds us in the midst of all of the uncertainty and brokenness in our world. As we continue to closely monitor the governor's updates and restrictions, along with recommendations from our bishop, we will continue to offer online worship for now. Additionally, we will offer worship services in our parking lot every three weeks, and that will include communion. Some ministry groups are beginning to meet in our building as well with new guidelines so that we can keep our community safe. In the meantime, if you would like us to pray for you or if you have a specific need that we might be able to meet, please reach out to us in the church office. We are always available to you, even if we cannot meet in person. And now let us worship together. Come all you people, come and praise the most high. Come all you people, come and praise the most high. Come all you people, come and praise the most high. Come now and worship the Lord. Come all you people, come and praise the Savior. Come all you people, 
come now and worship the Lord. Come all you people, come and praise the Savior. Come all you people, come and praise the Savior. Come all you people, come and praise the Savior. Come now and worship the Lord. Come all you people, come and praise the Spirit. Come all you people, come and praise the Spirit. Come all you people, come and praise the Spirit. Come now and worship the Lord. Let us pray. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. We give thanks for this good earth, your gift to us and our home. And we pray for wisdom and gentleness to care for your creation, O God. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into God's presence with singing. We gather with grateful hearts, remembering your mercy and strength, your justice and your compassion, your goodness and your grace. Know that the Lord is God. We may live that we know of you and strive for what we seek, O oh God. We are God's people and the sheep of God's pasture. In humility, we pray for the entire human family, remembering those in need and those who are alone, dishonored, or excluded. Enter God's gates with thanksgiving and God's courts with praise. Move us through thanksgiving and praise to action. Use us to heal whenever there is violence and harm. Give thanks to God. Bless God's name. May we embrace your just purpose, O God, and offer ourselves in prophetic witness. For the Lord is good. We pray for your goodness to flow outward, flooding this world with love. God's steadfast love endures forever. We pray for your loving purpose in every life this day and into the days to come. And God's faithfulness to all generations. Amen. Our gospel reading for this Sunday comes to us from the ninth chapter of Matthew's gospel, starting with the 35th verse. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. And then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves, so be wise as serpent and as innocent as doves. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to councils and flog you in their synagogues. And you will be dragged before governors and kings because of me, as a testimony to them and the Gentiles. And when they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given to you at that time. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and father to his child, and children will rise up against their parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all because of my name, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. And when they persecute you in one town, flee to the next, for truly I tell you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. Here ends the reading. Warning, the following program contains some challenging dialogue. Viewer discretion is advised. See, Jesus says, I'm sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves. Who would have thought that we'd ever get to the point where we'd much rather talk about politics over the Thanksgiving table than deal with the realities of our world today? I mean, seriously, where can we start? Whether it's coming to grips 
with the death of George Floyd, with the civil unrest in our cities or around the globe, the call to reflect on our own learned patterns of racial bias or a culpability in perpetuating a system that might not work for everyone, but it works well enough for us, so we're not going to rock the boat. Are we called to march in the streets or support our first responders, to tear down the walls of justice or just hug our neighbors? Someone said to me, you know, I don't buy all this white privilege stuff. I just live my life by the golden rule and treat one another as human beings and, and live in peace, which works until that one or other neighbor that you're at peace with can't breathe because our system has a knee to the back of their neck. I warned you at the beginning, if you were looking for some kumbaya type of sermon, you best turn to another TV preacher who will skip right over all the hard parts of life, much less the hard parts that are found in our scripture, because what we have today, we have work. Anyone who says that scripture doesn't speak into the realities of our life isn't reading the Bible. I mean, are you kidding me? Matthew 9, on this day, a sign for the second Sunday after Pentecost? I mean, this is a three-year cycle that was created centuries ago. It was re-edited decades ago, and it's used across the globe in hundreds, thousands, millions of churches. And into the racial turmoil of our day, we get, see, I'm sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves. Now you can go ahead and claim that Jesus wasn't talking about the societal conflict of institutional racism or police reform, but I don't think you really want to talk about what he was really pointing at, the selfish sin that lies within each of us and the privilege of power that we will wield to protect our own self-interest, a sin that keeps us each from being united as the diverse and beautiful creation that God created us to be. I got to admit, I'm convicted by this text. And when Christ entered these same towns and the countryside and the cities, he saw the suffering. Verse 36 reminds us, when he saw those crowds, he had compassion because they were harassed and they were helpless like sheep without a shepherd. And when he said this, he said to his disciples, this harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Indeed, the harvest is plentiful, but where are the laborers? Where are they? Well, Jesus did something about that. And that is the good news. Jesus summoned his disciples and he gave them authority, authority over unclean spirits to cast them out, to cure every disease and every sickness. But guess who are the disciples now? That's the bad news. It's you. I know you're all torn up. We're all torn up by what is happening. I'm reading your Facebook posts I'm reading your emails and your tweets. I hear all the time, I don't know where to begin or what to say. Well, Jesus gave us very, very clear instructions. Start right in your own home. He told his disciples, don't feel like you have to run off and save the whole world. Rather, go to those lost sheep in your own country, in your own neighborhoods, in the house of Israel. Go to your own people and start with your family, with your friends, with your relatives, with our church. Having difficult conversations about race, call to any comment that might ridicule others or make judgments about others. Call them to the table. Views that paint someone unfairly this is where we're called to go. And as you go, proclare some good news that the kingdom of heaven has come near. You may have seen that I participated in a town hall forum 
last week through a partner church, St. Peter's AME in South Minneapolis. I was invited to be a panelist speaking together with others about the realities of race in Minneapolis, how we got here and where we need to go. And when it was pointed out that we are called to be an ally against racism and have those difficult conversations with our families and with our friends, the moderator turned to me and asked, well, Pastor John, is the white church ready to start this work? My reply, no. I mean, she was so taken aback. She's like, well, I kind of expected a more hopeful answer, but I had to be honest. I mean, who likes to talk about difficult conversations? Who likes to admit that they were wrong or failed to speak up when they heard a racial comment or they saw a disparity and did nothing? We are faced with a shame-filled culture and already have enough hang-ups ourselves. Repent for racism? I mean, that's such a daunting concept. We're Minnesotans, after all. Aren't we slightly better than the rest or above average? Our next level of self-resistance that I feel we we'll constantly face is that once we get up just a little bit of courage, we don't know what to say. We don't want to offend anybody, so we say nothing instead. And that's where Jesus assures us in the scripture. Don't worry about what you're going to speak or what you need to say, for what you are to say has already been given to you and will be given to you in that moment by the Spirit of the Father that is speaking through you. In the town hall forum that I participated in, I was wondering why in the world would they have picked me to be a panelist, much less what would I have to offer that could be helpful in this dialogue. But the moderator kept coming back to me again and again, and the words that I found was from the mission that you and I share in this community, the heart of what we've been about, the realities and the successes and the failures that we've had in facing creating a welcoming place for all people, trying to serve of acts and justice and figure that all out. I mean, we're not perfect, but at least we're trying, and yet we still got to do better. When we approach conversations on race with humility and with integrity, that's when we invite our family members to share their own views on this and we're invited back to share what God places on our own hearts. Your job is not to convince anyone about to think in the ways that you do. God works in each and every one of us in God's own time. Jesus reminds us, if anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake the dust off from your feet because you already planted the seed and I will make the growth. Not everyone who listens will hear, but we can. Not everyone who suffers endures, but we can. Not everyone who endures has the character of Christ, but we can. It won't be easy. That's why Jesus tells us, like sheep, you're sent out into the midst of wolves because he knows human nature. He knows that when we speak up for others, Others will defend their own rights and they'll try and pacify us and our protest by maintaining the status quo. That's why he commends us to be as wise as serpents and as innocent as doves. Wise as the serpent in the Garden of Eden who knew our human side, who said, don't you want to be like God? all loving for all of creation? Aren't we called to be like Jesus, to lure us in and agree? And yet, as innocent as doves, to carry that heart of peace and goodwill as our intent. Whenever we speak up, it's going to cause division. The gospel always has. Being a peacemaker is not synonymous with being a pacifier. It means standing up. It means calling a sin a sin. And through the process of repentance and reconciliation, drawing each and every one of us just a little bit closer 
to that kingdom of God. That's what Jesus said, after all. Wherever you go, go out in my name and proclaim the good news for all people, not just white people, not just privileged people. Tell them that the kingdom of our God is coming near. Because in Matthew's gospel, the sheer presence of Christ was the kingdom. And when you go out and share Christ's peace, you are Christ. You may say it's a savior complex, but that's exactly what this scripture calls for each of us. After all, Christ gave you authority, not to judge, but to heal. Heal unclean spirits within yourselves and within your families and within our church and to cast them out and to cure every disease, even racism. The harvest, my friends, is plentiful. But the laborers, how about you and I pick up a hoe together and we start? And don't worry, the Spirit will give us the words we need. Amen. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. Holy One, you bring us together and call us your own. Bless theologians, teachers, and preachers who help us grow in faith. Guide your church that we might be a holy people. Holy One, the whole earth is yours. Where there is fire, bring cool air and new growth. Where there is flooding, bring abatement. Where there is drought, bring rain. Inspire us to care for what you have provided. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Holy One, you care for those who are harassed and helpless. Protect and defend those who are abused. Feed all who hunger. Empower all, those, all whose voices go unheard. And help us respond to the pressing needs of our neighbors. Heal those who grieve and those who are sick. We remember especially today, Matt Sieveland and Charlie Clays. We pray for each our individual concerns. We lift up to you in the silence of our hearts. Comfort their hearts and ours with your healing presence. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Holy One, we have created divisions you will not own. We pray for change and healing in our communities and nation as we seek racial equity and justice. Raise up leaders who work to develop lasting peace and reconciliation. Holy One, prepare us to labor and gather the fruits of this congregation that we might discover new ways of living. Minister to us in our work, that we do not lose heart. We pray for our congregation partner, Iglesia Concordia, that our connection with them may be strengthened through you. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now let us pray together the words our Lord taught us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the benediction. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Amen.